Welcome to the stitch of the month. Uh, this month we're crocheting the zigzag stitch, also known as the ripple or chevron stitch. And this stitch comes in all sorts of variations. The basic idea is that you're alternating uh, peaks and valleys, and you can make these points as sharp and exaggerated as you like, or you could make a wave type pattern. Now the basic principle of the ripple or zigzag stitch is that you crochet up one side, then increase a number of stitches here, and then crochet down the other side. And at this point, you decrease the same number of stitches that you increased here at the top. And by increasing here and decreasing here, you create this peak and valley motif. Now, the more stitches you increase and decrease, the sharper your points will be. Now, in this swatch, I worked three stitches in the same stitch at the top, and this effectively means I increased one stitch uh, per side of each peak. And that means that at the bottom, I need to again decrease one stitch on both sides of the valley. And there are two ways to do this. Um, either double crochet three stitches together at the bottom in the point, or you skip two stitches at the bottom. In this swatch, there are uh, five stitches worked into each point. So an increase of four stitches. And that means we need to decrease from five stitches down to one stitch at the bottom. And that will decrease the extra four stitches. And that's all there is to it. The more stitches you increase at the top, the sharper the curve will be. And the number of stitches you increase is the same you have to decrease at the bottom. Now the pattern is quite straightforward to follow, but I'm just going to quickly show you how to get started. I've chained 49 stitches for this demonstration, and we begin in the fourth chain from the hook with a double crochet, and I'm using US crochet terminology. This will create a uh, sort of V stitch here at this point. And that's one double crochet, a chain stitch, and another double crochet. Then chain one, skip one stitch, and double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one stitch, and one double crochet. Chain one, skip one, and one double crochet. And now I'm going to create the bottom point. Um, note that my side here is shorter than on the swatch. Um, now for the valley point, I need to decrease from five stitches to one stitch. And that's a decrease of four stitches in total. To do so, I chain one, and then I work a partial double crochet. So that's without the final pull through. Then skip three stitches and work another partial double crochet. You now have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And there I've made one stitch from five. And that works out to a decrease of two stitches on this side and two stitches on this other side. And now to continue, chain one, skip one stitch, one double crochet. Chain one, skip one stitch. And one double crochet. We're now going to create the top point or peak. Uh, that's this here. So chain one, skip one stitch, and then work one double crochet in the next stitch. Chain 
then chain three this will be the top of the peak and double crochet again in the same stitch as the previous double crochet and like that I've increased from one stitch to five stitches so this is the one stitch and I've got a double crochet three chain stitches and another double crochet in it so to recap in the valley point I've decreased from five stitches to one stitch and in the peak I've increased from one stitch to five stitches that's one double crochet three chain stitches and a double crochet and then you continue working down the other side to the point in the valley where you'll once again decrease to create the angle I've reached the bottom so I work a partial double crochet skip three stitches and work another partial double crochet I have three loops on my hook then I yarn over and pull through all three loops and there I've decreased five stitches back to one stitch so that's this one double crochet three chain stitches and the second double crochet all work together into one single stitch in the middle and then you simply repeat this as often as you want um, it all depends on the project you want to make um, adjust the length of your foundation chain to the width you need and then determine how long you want the sides of each zigzag to be now you can crochet this uh, zigzag pattern in any stitch you like uh, you could opt for solid rows of double crochets or half double crochets or just single crochets you could mix things up and work in the back loops only instead of through both loops of each stitch uh, all these options will produce completely different effects now in this swatch I've opted to alternate an open row and a closed row of double crochets and I have a tip for you um, if you're changing colors a lot um, like I've done here and this stitch works so well with lots of color then you're going to end up with lots of ends to weave in what you want to avoid is fastening off each color on the same side of your work otherwise you'll end up having to weave in all the ends down the same side and that will make this edge quite bulky and distort the pattern instead I suggest that each time you change color join your new color on the opposite side of the work from where you fastened off so join with a standing double crochet or whichever stitch you're using and then the next time start again on the other side and that way you distribute the ends evenly down both sides of your work and avoid bulky edges i hope you have lots of fun experimenting and making your first project with the zigzag stitch